In Asian custom, the wet, which is what they call it, is the base of the horn, and that's what they're after. And in many instances of poaching, the poaching has um, been on rhinos that have been dehorned because of, as I say, the wet, um, the base of the horn, which is where all the medicinal properties are supposed to live. And second of all, because of the incredible value, even though it's not the whole horn, um, it's still incredibly valuable. It's more valuable than the rhino itself. So that was um, option number two is dehorning. Um, option number three is getting full-time security. Uh, I don't really want to live like that. I live here because I enjoy nature and I, I, don't, I want to, don't want to live in a prison. And um, so really, this is the direction I chose, and that's why I chose it. We're actually just in the Free State for the, um, the first actual treatment of a rhino horn in the Free State province to try and prevent poachers from actually harvesting it. And uh, so the horn will be instilled with an indelible bank dye, which is adherent to a toxin, which is not really suitable for human consumption. They need to be mobilized, obviously, when you're working with two tons of enthusiasm and they don't really stand sore for you to do a quick procedure on them so they need to be sedated um, then we would have plugged their ears with cotton wool there would have been a blindfold uh, uh, cover, covering the eyes just to minimize the animal stress levels because when they're sedated they're not really zonked out entirely they're still lucid and they're still awake so you want to make sure that they don't get too stressed throughout the procedure then we drill a hole into each of the horns posterior and anterior to which we attach a probe and then uh, to those probes the infusion device is connected. The infusion device is a pressurized container which contains the infusion compound uh, which is an ectoparasiticide mixture along with an indelible dye. Um, in your footage you would see that bright pink dye that we got on our gloves or that was on the top that was under the animal. So those horns, uh, because a rhino's horn is inside largely tubular in structure, which means it's almost hollow, it would be like holding a bundle of straws in your hand. It's quite easy to, when you apply the right pressure, infuse a liquid all the way up into those straws from the bottom to the top of the horn. And that's what happened during the infusion part of the, of the procedure. Then in addition to that, because it's re required by law, we fitted microchips into both the back and front horns as well as the body of the animal and then harvested some DNA samples. So tail, hair, an ear notch, some of the horn material that was drilled out. And then after that, the animal is woken up and uh, you hopefully have another happy customer, an animal that's managed to keep its horn and looks exactly the way nature intended, rather than, as I, as I tend to mention to people, who really wants to see the big four and a half. It takes approximately eight to ten minutes from when that dart impacts that is if it impacts correctly, which is a bit difficult when it's running through thick bush before it goes down. So in eight to ten minutes, that rhino could have covered how many hundreds of meters, even not kilometers through the farm, and then we're not going to find it again. So if it goes down in really thick bush and you don't find it, and it falls down and it's covering its nose or it's lying inappropriate, it actually kills over and dies from the anesthetic. So that, together with the ambient temperature, the location where they're in, that we're running out of hours in the day, um, all of those factors together and then also this animal's been running since 8 o'clock this morning there's been excitement and things and you're looking at 1 o'clock in the afternoon to knock it down um, there is a very high likelihood that you're going to get a lot of anesthetic complications and we're doing something here to promote rhinos lives and try and prevent them from dying prevent them from being poached the last thing we want is to be all gung-ho and then kill a rhino doing our procedure then we might as well not have done it so we could rather come back on another day, let them be relaxed, do the procedure properly, and that way actually maintain the rhino's health and safety and allow it to survive the procedure. So this infusion is in fact just another, just one more step in this, in this, in this war against, against this massacre, which is just exploding or completely going Exactly. You, you can't stop rhino poaching by doing only one specific thing. You need better enforcement. In the long run, you need to change the market in Southeast Asia that the consumer in the end realizes that what they're doing is not really ethically acceptable and that perhaps through something like this, the rhino horn treatments, it's not really ideal for them to be consuming it. But it's multimodal. It requires anti-poaching units. It requires changes in legislation. It requires the rooting out of corruption. We 
I feel very good about the decision that I've made and the reasons that I've made it. And um, I, uh, again, I, I couldn't prescribe to anybody, but if anybody were to ask me, uh, and I hope I will say the same thing in two, three years time, uh, I would say this is, this is the right route to go for a private rhino owner.